Whichever path contains mature themes, adult language, and situations that some may find unsettling, listener discretion is advised. Last episode, your son was taken. And the people you were raised to believe would help are acting just as suspiciously as they claim you're being by not talking to them. One of the people who came to your home with information is now a suspect in your son's disappearance. With a race against time, you and your wife join a search party until the late hours of the night. But when you got home, there's evidence that someone has broken in and is currently in your basement. After firing a warning shot, you find the intruder, the very same person you chased through the woods weeks ago. Begging for you not to shoot them, they're now trying to retrieve something to show you from their pocket. Here's what happens next. Whichever path presents Sentry, Part 7, where I can see them. Your ears are still ringing from the warning shot as the ratty figure at the bottom of the stairs is slowly reaching toward their pocket. They're staring at your gun. No one in your neighborhood would blame you if you shot this fucker dead. But your boy is out there. And with this being the second time you fired your gun in the neighborhood, there's no chance the cops aren't on their way. They flip their hair out their face. There's a jagged scar that runs through the middle of their lower lip and down their neck. You still can't determine what gender they are. And, in your head, you hear Cole giving you shit about that knee-jerk reaction. The scarred intruder's body posture is frozen. You feel like you're crazy. Take your hand out of your pocket, now. There was something left down here that would hurt you. I I got rid of it. I did it for Cole. He gave me something to show you. To say he's alright. Alright. Put it on the stairs. Slowly. Slowly. I can put four slugs in your ugly fucking mouth before you try a thing. The scarred intruder grimaces when you call them ugly. But they comply and from their pocket produce Cole's black headphones. Placing them on the stairs. Their hands are trembling. They're terrified. You can hear sirens. Where is my son? Safe. Uh, I'm here to take you to him. He needs you. We, we all, we need you. Baby? Are you alright? Yeah, I got him. I got the guy. The flashing blue lights in your driveway are lighting up the inside of your house. They're going to knock, but then they're going to break in. You'll have to put the gun down or get shot. You keep your gun trained on the intruder. The scar on their face is shiny and wet. The cops are coming. The only places you're going together now are jail or the morgue. Or we can go now. They won't find what they were looking for down here. It's been eaten away. Uh, Come with me. Come with me downstairs, now. The knocks are loud and deliberate. You hear them yelling your name. Come on now! Jamie, get the door! We're about to open up. Don't break the door down. Just tell me where I can find him. Come downstairs. I can get us out. We need to get to him. Your wife, she can come too. You hear several cops in tactical gear break through your door. Jamie screams from the other room. And you have a choice between the scarred intruder promising to bring you to Cole or your wife. The call is easy. You tuck your gun to the back of your pants and then walk into the front hall, where you see your wife on the ground, her hands behind her back, a row officer reaching for cuffs. There are six other cops in here. Your presence causes them all to pause and panic, pointing their guns at you. It's likely one of them will shoot if 
you even say anything. But at least you know if they're pointing their guns at you. They're not pointing them at your wife. They yell so many different orders. You just freeze with your hands up. They frisk you, and you give a sigh of relief that the one who grabs your gun doesn't shout out what he found. At least he isn't trying to kill you. You're kicked to the ground before you can even mention the person in the basement. For the second time this year, you feel steel on your wrists. Search the house for anyone else. Look for fellas in the basement. I want a lawyer. You're gonna need one, man. Sir, you gotta see this. Anything you want to say before I go see what he found? Okay, then. Nice knowing you. You two, put the woman in the car away from him. You and you, keep him here. Holt leaves the front hall and makes his way to the basement. Jamie is pulled out of the house. You can hear more cops circling your home. If the scarred intruder tries to make a break for it, they'll catch him. One of the cops pulls you up into a seated position on the floor. It makes you think about the boy you had in this position all those years ago. He was maybe 15 years old. Your Arabic was terrible and he was unable to understand you. The gun he used to shoot Marcus lay on the cracked tile next to him. You had to stop one of your brothers from executing him, ordering everyone to try to keep Marcus alive while you radioed for help. When you all got back to base, you handed the kid off and waited for word on Marcus. And when he was airlifted out, someone informed you the kid killed himself in his cell. Now, on your living room floor, your mind keeps going back to that boy on the cracked tiles, and you no longer picture his face, but Cole's. Holt's footsteps up the stairs are quick and heavy. He storms up to you and gives you a kick in the ribs. One of them cracks. You two, go outside, now! He's furious. You can hear his guys breaking things downstairs, searching your home. The pain in your side makes it hard to breathe. Holt grabs a handful of your hair and brings his lips to your ear. How the fuck did you do it? Where the fuck is he? And did he get out through the bulkhead? How the fuck is Fells gonna get up and walk? There's a fucking mushroom forest on the floor! Right where he What the fuck are you talking about? How did you get rid of it? How? He kicks you again. Piece of shit. <clears throat> Colors dance across your vision. He's winding up for another when your front door opens. Step away from him. Now. This man assaulted me. I'm applying the appropriate force to get him to comply. I'll take him in. The fuck you are, it's my arrest. Wait, who the fuck are you? Agent Temple, Federal Bureau of Investigation. Your arrest is a person of interest in a federal crime. Bullshit. I know this guy. I'll be bringing him in. You know him, huh? Well, given the way you've had to defend yourself from a handcuffed man, I think I'll take it from here. You don't have jurisdiction. I'll... <coughs> I'll take... <coughs> take a breath to collect yourself. I'll get him out of here. Come on, sir. Nice and easy. The Fed helps you to your feet. From the basement, you hear more coughing from the other cops. Your left side is screaming. Holt fucked you up. Agent Temple's grip on your right arm is firm, but not painful. Opening your front door, he leads you outside, into the blinding strobe of several squad cars. There's a SWAT van parked in front of your house. All of your neighbors must be watching. Again. Temple brings you to his car. Past the armored cops who are sneering at you and the agent. You see Jamie in another black sedan next to you. She looks almost catatonic. After you're in the car, you try to get her attention, but she's looking back at the house. Temple gets in, and waves at the driver of Jamie's car and pulls out. The Fed drives in silence, past your neighbor Todd's house, and it's five minutes before he speaks. We're not taking you two to the barracks. What? I'm Tom's friend. He called me when he reviewed your footage in the phone. 
You mentioned your trooper pal in there, too. Seems Tom thought he was up to some shit, and from what I can tell, he was right. Did he share that stuff with you? Oh, yeah. You do the right thing in telling Tom everything. Because you might have found the missing piece that ties several disappearances and murders over the past 15 years. After the phone, I started looking for some other common threads besides just the victims, and I found one. Holt. Holt. Yeah. <sighs> Three of the deceased were gay prostitutes frequenting rest stops in the area. Another was transgender. Holt started out as a responding officer, then an investigator. And he's been the one debunking theories that there is a link between these crimes. And it being New Hampshire, the victims weren't necessarily ones a lot of people cared enough about to look for a real pattern until you got that phone. Do you think Holt has my son? That's just it. I don't think he does. I think he tried to get him. I don't think he got the Rye kid either. He thinks you know where your kid is. And maybe the other one, too. And that's why he beat the fuck out of you and why I think he killed Myron Fells. His car pulls down Park Street and parks in front of the dirt path that leads into the middle school's baseball field. The car carrying Jamie pulls up next to you. Tom woke up three hours ago. He gave a description of the guy driving Fells' car. The driver was white. Whoever it was rammed him off the road and... And his car nearly went into the Merrimack. Tom was almost killed. His head wound and being unconscious. It, it looked like he wasn't going to make it. We're pulling the footage from the accident, but we're doing it carefully. There's a good chance Holt's got people watching his back. Temple, there was someone in my house. I thought Holt knew about him, but he was telling me he knew Myron was in my basement. He asked if... <sighs> Shit. Can you uncuff me? My phone's in my pocket. Yeah, yeah, sure. He gets out of the car, opens your door, and uncuffs you. While he does that, the other agent releases Jamie. Her hug causes you to wince and suck in air. The broken rib, it's gotta be broken, is throbbing. Opening your phone, you bring up the security app. You select the basement camera and go to the entry before the one that showed the scarred intruder walking down the stairs. The door opens. With the power out, the camera's night vision shows Myron walking down the stairs, slow and stiff. Behind him is a taller man, Holt. He has Myron at gunpoint. There's a struggle at the bottom of the stairs, followed by Holt walking back and forth repeatedly. He's slightly out of frame, but seems to be dragging something. Finally, he walks back up the stairs and closes the basement door as he leaves. There's been no chatter about a body at your house while we've been driving. None. But there's apparently some kind of weird mushroom or mold situation down there. Cops are choking on the spores. What's that about? I, I don't know. The person I saw said they took care of something that Holt left down there. I think maybe they meant Myron. Wait a minute. Holt killed someone in our basement and tried to set us up? And what the fuck does this have to do with Cole? You tell them all what you saw. Temple records it as you talk and his partner calls into the bureau to have Holt taken in. You describe the scarred intruder in detail, but you keep thinking about what they said. Are you fucking this up? Are you missing the chance to find your son? You don't tell Temple about the intruder's offer. Do you have any idea where the guy who came to your house, this scarred intruder, may have gone? Yeah, I think so. But can I talk to Jamie for a second? Why? Because we both haven't had more than a second to breathe since our son went missing. Please. Yeah, okay. Jamie holds your hand tightly as you walk down the dirt path toward the baseball diamond. We walk about 80 feet away and stand next to a tall pine. Baby, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna find coal? The smell of someone's wood stove fills your nostrils. It reminds you of sitting around a campfire with coal back when he was 10, when he asked if you could all live in a cabin in the woods one day. Your son is out there, and you don't know if Temple can actually help you. 
Babe, I have a plan, but I need you to back it up. The plan is simple, and it's risky, but you're sure it's the only option you two have to find Cole. You walk back to Agent Temple's car. He looks relieved you didn't run. His partner is in the other car. She's on the phone. You are exhausted and in agony. That rib is floating in your fucking chest. We think we know how to find Cole. There's only one place you could think of that the scarred intruder would have gone. The railroad tracks. But how did the intruder get away from your house? And if you get the feds involved, will you even be able to find them? And if Myron is dead, should Tasha know? We can't tell you the answer to that. You have to tell us what your plan is. What did you and Jamie decide? Did you tell Agent Temple the complete truth and let the FBI take over the search? Decide to take him with you to a fake location while Jamie and Tasha look for Cole by the tracks? Or do you make a plan to look for Cole the next day, but attempt to sneak away to find the scarred intruder by yourself? Vote now at whicheverpath.com slash vote. You have until Friday, March 18th. This episode was written by Stephen and Journey and produced by Whichever Path. The decisions that happened within the story were made by you. The show featured Tyler Bell as you, Journey LaFond as Jamie, Harlan Guthrie as Carl Holt, Michael Gagney as Agent Temple, Stephen LaFond as the scarred intruder and a lot of cops. Foley was by Whichever Path, Audio Hero, and Adobe. The Whichever Path theme is by Ryder. The following songs were licensed through EpidemicSound.com. Unfettered and Unchained by Golden Anchor. Zipper by Bill Ferngren. Surveillance Camera by Alan Carson Green. As a reminder, whichever path is made possible from the generous donations of our Patreon subscribers. With your help, we can pay our actors, improve our sound, and widen the path for even more choices and stories. Consider joining us at patreon.com slash whichever path where you can gain access to exclusive episodes, outtakes, and content that makes our world richer. If you can't, don't worry about it. Just leave us glowing reviews wherever you listen to podcasts and turn more people onto the show. We count on you to evangelize for our unique storytelling. We really can't do this without you. That's it for this week. Don't forget to vote and sleep with a clear consequence. Choose the path.